I'm Patrick Bailey with whiteboardcoder.com. Today is June 18th, 2018. And in this video, I'm going to be going over three Linux commands, uh, PWD, LS, and CD. Okay, now with these videos, I hope to go over, I hope to keep doing these. I just want to do kind of three Linux commands at a time with these videos and kind of go over in some detail and figure out some little hacky, interesting things to do. And so with this first video, we're just going to kind of go over some of the very beginner basics where people might need some help with those things. But also some of, the, some of the commands are interesting. I did a series of classes at work where we started going over some basics with some people who did not know Linux and half the team did know Linux. And as we went through some of these basics, we started sharing with each other. And we actually started to find interesting ways of doing things with the commands that we've been using for years. So some of these videos, even though we might be doing basic things, may be worthwhile for someone to watch really quickly to learn a few new things um, that you may just not be aware of. Uh, I know I found a lot of things out. Now this first one, probably not going to be so much because I'm going over some very simple commands. And for those, this is probably very, very beginner. I shouldn't say probably is, and there's not going to be a lot of hacking going on. It, so with that, let me get going. So the first thing I want to go over is PWD. And PWD, oh, before I do, before I do that, I just want to show what I'm in. So I'm on the command line. I happen to be in an Ubuntu 16.04 box. And I'll just show uh, what I'm on. So if I do lsb underscore release dash a, that's going to show that I'm in Ubuntu 16.04, just to show everyone I'm at. Most of the commands I'll be doing are going to work just fine on anything, but sometimes there's a few little flavors of Linux that may have issues or may be a little different. Fair, stuff I'll be doing should be working universally, I think. Uh, but just to show you I'm out. I'm on 16.04, Ubuntu 16.04. Okay, so with that, uh, PWD. So PWD actually stands for Print Work Directory. So if I do PWD and enter, it's going to show the directory I'm in. So I'm in slash home slash patman. So this is my typical home directory. Typically, your home directory is slash home, whatever your username is. And so wherever you're at, it just shows where you're at. So not PWD, there's not much else you do with it. You do use it in other commands sometimes, but the Print Work Directory, you use a lot just to find where you're at. Uh, so with that, that's PWD. So now on to the next command, ls. Uh, ls is for listing. So if I just do a simple ls, it'll list all the files that are not hidden files, but they're just uh, normal files that are in my directory here. And you can see I got, uh, in this case, they're highlighted in different colors. So the blue is representing folders. I happen to call it folder one and folder two. They don't have to be called, uh, they don't have to be called folder. Uh, and then just a couple of files. So there's with ls or some other things you can do. So another thing I typically do when I'm doing things, I do ls-alh. Now, if you're new to Linux, what you'll see is usually you have a command and then you have extra information where you can actually do some of their features on there. And if you have one dash, a single dash, what that means is every single character after that is a special uh, subcommand. Uh, maybe subcommand is not the right word to use, special feature that you're going to use in that command. So here I have an A, L, and an H. So, so those are all different things. Uh, versus sometimes you can do dash dash, and now that help is not four different things, it's actually just one word. But you'll see that here in a second. So if I do dash A, L, H, what that does is three things. Uh, and I'll show them in a second here, but right now what I can see is everything including my hidden files. And hidden files in Linux are denoted by just having a dot in front of them. If you put a dot in front of any file, it becomes hidden, and then ls won't show it unless you do a dash a l, unless you do a dash a, which should show all. So I can do a dash ls dash a, and I can see all the files that way. Uh, dash l, ls dash a l, uh, the l is gonna be a long format. So now you can see everything's printed like this. Like I could, I could do an ls dash l, which won't show me the hidden files. And I get this long format, which gives me more information about the file. I won't go too in depth on that at this point, but this is the owner, this is the group owner, the size of the file in bytes. You know, last it was, I believe, touched, uh, edited, I think. I have to think about that, not, not the creation date. And then over here, you can find other information here, like this D will indicate it's a directory. And then here's the permission, which I'm not gonna go over right now, but there's information. And right now you'll see this, there's 4096. Now if I do ls-al-lh, the h is human readable. So that 4096 bytes goes down to k. It says this is 4k. So if I, if I have bigger files, it's easier to write, you know, see the megs or gigs, depends on what your needs are. 
Okay, so that's the excitement of LS. But let me go over this. So I can do LS dash dash help. And with most command, most commands, you can do a dash H for help most often, or a dash dash help uh, to get more information. And so that will bring up something like this. If I scroll up here, it'll tell me all the different type things I can add to my command. So the arguments I can have. So here you can say there's that dash A. And you can say, do not ignore entries starting with a dot. In other words, the hidden files are now shown. But it shows also the alternative. I could do dash dash all. And if I go down here, I'm not going to go over every single one here, but I'll go over the ones I did list. If I go down to H, which in many commands is help. In this case, it's actually not help. It's human readable. So I could do dash H or dash human readable. And so that's where it shows. Hey, rather than, you know, it'll show 1K meg gig. And then let's see, dash L is use the long listing format. So you can get more information like that. Uh, another thing I could do is even though I can bunch those up like that, I can actually do that just fine. And that should work. Same result. Uh, but you always get in a habit of what's convenient for you. Different people use different things. I use dash ALH all the time. That's what works in my brain. Uh, but I could have gone through and used the long version. So I could have gone, let's see, what's A? All. I could have gone dash dash all dash dash. Oh, L doesn't have a long one. Uh, I could do human readable. There we go. Oh, yeah. Isn't it type all that? So human readable. Human readable. And that should work just fine. And then I could actually do a dash L. And so you can mix them. It's no problem. The one thing you can't do is now that you have that dash dash, you can't do that. It's not going to decipher that because dash dash, it needs to all be there. You, if you're using dash dash, you have to separate them. Okay. So there's LS simply done. Uh, and the last command I'm going to go over is CD. And then I'll do a little bit of hacks. And when I say hacks, I don't mean hacking things. I'm just, just filling around and showing you some interesting things you can do. And this first time, I'm going to keep it rather simple. We're not going to do anything complex with the, with the hacks. Okay, so CD, which means change directory. So you can see here, I'm in Home Patman. And you also can see that I have some folders. And so I can change directory. I can say CD folder 01, and now I'm in that folder. And I can see that if I do PWD, PWD, I can see that I am in this folder. Now, when it comes to CD, there's a couple of interesting things you can do. Um, I can do relative paths. And so you'll see this in CD and in other commands that if you see things like a dot, a dot, when you're referring to the folder structure, means here. So I can actually say CD dot to change the directory to the directory I'm in, which may be funny, but it does it. It works. And you can actually see that right now. So if you do an LS dash ALH, if you look here at the top, you'll see this dot and this dot dot. This dot is referring to the folder itself. And this shows you permissions on the folder. So there's some interesting information here. This, but then there's dot dot, which refers to the parent directory. So I can actually go CD dot dot and watch it bumps me up to my parent directory. So that's useful information to have. Another thing you can do, let me go down a folder here, is there's a tilde. So if you do CD tilde, what that's going to do is it'll take you to your home directory, whatever you, your user you currently are. And so in my case, my home directory is home patman. So if I do CD tilde, I'll always go back to my own home directory. So that's a useful and useful thing to do. Uh, but I also, you can know, you can mix it up with a CD. So I can say LS, sorry, see uh, LS. So I can actually, no matter where I'm at, I could do an LS and I can list my home directory. So that might be useful. You could be somewhere else and you can list your home directory or you could give a whole path if you want to really. Okay. Let's see. What else do I have? Uh, just changing around. So I can actually, uh, I can put in the whole path. So I can say home patman folder 01. The entire path works and I can go to that and see that's where I'm at. I can say CD temp uh, and that'll get me to the temp directory. If I go CD, let me go to CD home. Uh, now that I'm in home, if I don't put a slash, if I put a slash in the front, that means go to the base directory and start there. If I don't do that, I can do patman folder 01 and it's relative to where I am right now.
boom, there you go. Uh, or if I go to CD temp, I can say CD tilde. So now everything's relative to my home directory and folder zero one. Now, one thing you may have seen me doing, if you're unfamiliar or new to Linux, uh, I've been using tab completion, which is a very nice thing. And it saves, you know, thank God they have it. But if I, if I do something like this, CD tilde, and at this point in most commands, there's things where you, even in the commands themselves, back to me, back up. If I say C and I hit tab one time, if there's only one command that starts the letter C, and it happened to be CD, it would fill it would it would fill out CD. Now in this case, there's many commands that start with C. So if I do tab twice in a row, it'll list out all the possible commands that in that start with C. And so it gives me all those choices to help me out. Now that doesn't help, you know, probably PW. Maybe PW has fewer. So if I say P, tab tab, there's 126 possibilities. I say no. PW. There. See now we're getting down there. PWD. Now, if I hit tab, there's actually a couple of commands I could do PWD, PWDX. So that didn't quite help me to get down there. Let me see. Uh, how about column remove as an example? So column, C-O-L-R, C -O -R -L -R, C -O -L -R, I hit tab just once. So there's nothing else there. So it completes it. Very useful. It also works within command. So I can say tilde and it knows that I want to go into a folder. So if I hit tab here. Uh, well, actually, there's some subfolders there. So if I hit, hit F, there's two folders that start with an F. If I hit Tab, it'll fill up as much as it can until as until it gets to a unique spot. And this is the one and the two. I hit the one, I hit Tab again, now I'm full. So very useful to know Tab completion. Okay, let's see what else. Oh, another nice thing with CD is, and I don't typically do this, is if you do CD dot dash, it'll actually go back to where you were. So in this case, before here, I was, oh, let me go someplace. Let me go back to my home directory and then go to folder one. So now if I do a CD dash, I should go back to my home directory. And there we go, I'm in my home directory. If I do a CD dash again, I should go back to where I was before and go to folder one. So if you have two places you wanna jump back and forth really quick like that, that CD minus is very useful. I don't use it much myself, but it's very nice to know. Okay, so there's those three commands. So there's uh, PWD for, you know, print work directory, LS for listing your directory, and uh, CD because you need to move around, change directory. And so with that, let me go do some simple hacks. Okay, some very simple hacks because we don't have a whole lot to work with. And when I do hacks, sometimes I incorporate other commands, but for this first video, I'll try to keep it a little simple. And sometimes hacks are just inspirational to know that you can do that, so it's worthwhile for you to learn some new things. Um, so with that, when I, when I, and also when I use the word hack, this is not hacking into a hacking into NAS or anything like that. You know, the old terminology for hack was actually kind of hacking around, fiddling. Fiddling probably is a more word that we might understand nowadays, most of us. You're just trying to fiddle with something, do something, do something interesting. You're not trying to hack into somewhere or beat some system. It's just fiddling around. So with that, let me do a few little things that I came up with here. Just a, a few little hacks that I wrote based on these commands. Uh, so if I do an LS, there's actually a T command. So if I only go back a directory, if I do LS dash T, it'll actually list it based on time. And so you can see those timestamps here, how they're now kind of in order, but I can actually do LS dash. So I can do LS dash dash LT, and then I can do what's called a pipe. So you see that little pipe. So you do a shift. There's a little key above the enter key on the right hand side. So you shift, do that, that's a pipe. And so that will pipe the results out to another command. And so in this case, I can do what's called a head. You know, think head and tail. So if you do a head and that's all you do, it'll list the first 10 lines. So you pipe all this stuff out, you pipe the results out to another command, the head command, and it lists the first 10 results. So in this case, you get the same thing. But I could also do a dash N, which in this case is number, and say, just give me the first two. And so in this case, that's going to return to me with, since I'm getting the first two lines, I'm getting that total number, but then I'm also getting that first one. So folder zero one is the newest file. But if I remember, if I remove that long list and I say head dash n one, we'll see between those two commands, I've listed the oldest file or directory in this case. So either one will apply because of the way we did it. Um, 
and actually you can if I use ls I'm not gonna do it right now but in ls you could say just to list files or also just to list directories but in fact maybe I should do that let me see ls why can't I think of that top of... I can't think of it off the top of my head okay recursive vote ignore directory there you go so there's a directory and so there should be a file so there's a directory where is this I just wait I'll use other commands for this typically grab file Let's see here show me size author Hmm. Well, I have to go think about that. I usually, use, I usually have other commands. But anyway, you could do interesting things like that. Uh, or I can also reverse it. So I can do an ls l uh, tr, and I can reverse the list. So now I've got the list in reverse, so I have the youngest file on top. And so let me get rid of that l, and so I can do a head dash n1. I think actually dash one works too. Yeah, dash one works too. And so now I just got back my youngest file. So that's uh, test.txt that's been modified most recently. Uh, other things you can do, awk. I'm not gonna go into awk. Awk's a really cool programming, you know, you can do a lot of really cool stuff with awk. And just to show you some of the stuff you can do, so I can do an ls-l, gets me all my long list. And then from there, I can pipe it, down to, pipe it out into the awk command. And then I can do things like this. So I can say print, ah, come on. Print uh, the first column, which is all your permissioning, and then print. Let's see. Oh, I need some space. That's going to give you a little space, and then nine, and that should give you the file name because the ninth column over. And there we go. So now I've got the permission in the folder and not the extra stuff. Or if I wanted, if I was only really concerned about uh, not the permissioning but the file size, it'd be one, two, three. Is that seven? Seven? No. Five. There we go. Five. There's the file size and the name. So you can do some interesting things like that. Uh, another thing I'll go over, another little thing is PWT. You can you you can put commands within commands to evaluate them. And now this is gonna be very redundant. You would never do this, but it's nice to know because you have I'll show you another place where you may have to use it on times. Uh, I can do a dollar sign and put in brackets in PWD. And so I can put a dollar sign and I can put a command within a command. So what this is going to do is that's going to evaluate to this local directory. So if I say cd dollar sign, you know, parens pdw, it's going to just say cd into this directory. So it's going to be redundant. You're not going to get anywhere. But oh, you could do things like this. You could say folder zero one. So that would be this directory, and then go to the directory up. A little dumb to do, but you may need to use that command in other places. So I've had to do things like this. I'm not going to go over the find command, but there is a find command where I can find files. So I can say, oh, let me go back one. Find here, I name, uh, file, files with files. So I have three files somewhere in my tree structure here that say, that start with the name file. And there they are. And so you can see they, so they show a relative path. So here is this directory, and then up to the folder, and there's the file. Well, now in some cases, you may need to pipe this information out somewhere else or save it somewhere else. And you have the relative path, but not the absolute path. And if you need the absolute path, you need to replace this dot with the absolute path. So I could say home patman, and that works. So now I get that home patman. Uh, but to save time and energy, because you may not know where you are when you're typing, you could say dollar sign PDW, which evaluates to home patman in this case. And there we go. So you may find you do things that like that. So here, there's some few little tiny hacks. So that's it for this video. And hopefully I start doing more of these, just some three little, three little Linux commands at a time and see if any, hopefully someone out there finds it useful and helpful. Thanks for watching. I hope you liked the video. If you did, please give it a like. To subscribe, just click the subscribe button. Also, you can follow me on Twitter under the handle at whiteboardcoder.com. View any code I may have thrown up as a gist uh, at GitHub under the username Patman Denver, or check out my blog site at whiteboardcoder.com.